going to base my teaching on praising God and worshiping God and also the honor that comes with that. And as I was going through this book of Jehoshaphat, of, of Second Chronicles and the story of King Jehoshaphat, I wanted us to probably divine, define a few terms. One of them is honor. From Google, I found that honor is the high risk, is a high respect, great esteem, reg or to regard someone with great respect. Honor is also a quality of knowing and doing what is morally right. Worship is literally bowing down a gesture of respect or submission to God, human beings or idols. But in, my, in the context of my, my teaching, I'm going to base it on submission to our God. Honor comes from the term worship, which means to, to put a price on something or a being above everything else. And for our case, it's going to put a praise on God above all things. And now on, on to the text of today, I want to just highlight on a brief background of, of King Jehoshaphat. His father was named Asa. I would uh, encourage all of us, if you find your time, it's a very interesting read. Just take your time and read the book of Second Chronicles. Probably start from around verses 17 going out once so you can know where Jehoshaphat is coming from, and also at least a, a background of who he was. He was the son of Asa. And during the time of his, uh, of his father's reign, Asa sought God when he started his reign, but eventually towards the end of it, uh, when he almost came to his end, it, it, it changed, things changed, and uh, it, 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 ended, it didn't end up well. As in, initially, he started seeking God concerning everything, but towards the end, he changed his into, into, into ways in such a way that even when he was sick on his deathbed, he never sought God in anything until he died. But now, when he dies, uh, Jehoshaphat takes over the leadership of, uh, of the kingdom of Judah, and, he's a, and uh, King Jehoshaphat is a leader who really had a heart for his God. He devoted his ways to God. That is according to Second Chronicles verses 17, 16. And the Bible tells us that through his devotion, his devotion to God, he even sent out his officials to go and teach the word of God throughout Judah. And as, his, as a result, the fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the land surrounding Judah. And they did not make war with Jehoshaphat during his reign. So this is somebody who really put God first in everything that he did. He did. And uh, as a result, we, go, we see God fighting for him in each and everything that he did. And then when you come to chapter 18, uh, there's a time that Je uh, Jehoshaphat goes to visit Ahab, the king of Israel. And uh, when he goes visiting the king of Israel, the king of Israel suggests, asks him if they can go and uh, if he can help him um, go to battle. With, um, uh, with this kingdom called Ramoth Gilead. But first, before they go to battle, King Jehoshaphat, being the kind of person he was, he asked him, kindly inquire of the Lord first before you go to this battle. So uh, King Ahab calls a bit of prophets, and they decide to, he asks them whether he should go for this battle or not. Uh, and there are several prophets that come, and. All of them are encouraging to go, but there's something in the spirit of King Jehoshaphat which was telling him, no, this is not the way to go. And he asked him, is there any other F prophet that you can inquire from? And the king indeed says, there is a prophet that they can inquire from. This prophet is called Micaiah. But unfortunately, this king did never like Micaiah because there's nothing that he said about <laughs> King Job that was good. So he didn't want him at all. And true to it, when Micaiah comes, he said, no, you're not supposed to go to this. So first, Kwanza Nikama Likwana enjoy, and then Bada, he, came and he comes and tells him, no, if you go, this will happen. And, if, and then eventually, it's a very nice read, you guys. Just go back and read this story. It's so interesting. But um, probably maybe I, maybe I can just say what he says there. Um, 
uh, that is in and then when because uh king haha was mad at uh, at uh, micaiah he orders micaiah to be praised on and even at some point you see there's another prophet who comes and slap micaiah you know asking how comes he feels that his prophet is more than these other prophecies but they didn't listen and of course they go to war and when they go to war with seeking Ahab from around verses uh, 28 there, uh, are encouraging King Jehoshaphat to go dressed, robed as a king, but him, he goes in disguise, honestly. Uh, um, but we thank God that because of the devotion that King Jehoshaphat had for God, God protects him. In that even when they went for war, despite the fact that he was dressed in his royal robes, God spared him in that because the, the other king of the other land had told them to specifically go for the king. But God protects him and is not harmed. But on the other hand, King Hahab is killed in the process. Now, I go back now to my, 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 that is just a background of where my story is coming from. And now I want to go to the main text, which is um, Second Chronicles 20. And as you have read, and uh, as was read by Simon, it's a story of where King Jehoshaphat hears that some, some, uh, some nations around them were coming to, to attack them. And when he hears about this, he gets a bit worried. But he decides to seek God concerning this. And when he seeks God concerning what to do, God gives him a, a solution on what to do. And that's where... I'm going to base my topic today, and I'm going to talk about now the, uh, the power of praising God, the power of worshiping, and also the power of, of, uh, of uh, praise. And uh, I'll just go straight to the lessons that we'll get from the book, the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 20. And kindly promise me that you're going to read this text. Thank you. At least when you read it, you'll at least interact or get where I'm coming from so that I only base, I go to directly to the lessons that you get from this text. One of the lessons that I got from this book is that King Jehoshaphat sought God first in everything that he did. That is honor. Seeking God in everything that you do is honor. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6, 33, that seek ye first the kingdom of God so that all these other things shall be added to you. So when you go through challenges in life, what do you do? Do you go to your friends to seek answers? Who do you go to when you're faced with challenges? When Jehoshaphat was, was, got this uh, news, he decided to seek God concerning what to do concerning this battle. And when he sought God, God gave him uh, an, a solution of what to do. So my encouragement to us this morning that for us, uh, as we go through this journey of, of Christianity, let us seek God in each and everything that you do so that our ways shall be commanded by him. And when you seek God first, it's a way of us honoring God. You know? So let us honor God by seeking him first in everything that you do. The other thing that I see that God does, that King Jehoshaphat does, he proclaims a fast. And each and every person in this land also joins in the fast. We normally have fasts here on Thursday in this church, but I know that... Uh, so what you is now fast, even me, sometimes I don't, but some, sometimes I do. It's also a way of, um, of feeding our spirit man so that we can grow in the ways of God. Sometimes we need to put food aside to seek God concerning issues in our life. And when you do that, we also honor God. Another thing that uh, King Jehoshaphat did that spoke to me in this is that he rendered praises to God through he rendered praises to God and also prayed. That, that we get that uh, from verses 6 to 9, where he talks of God's goodness, the things that God had done from them all through the, all through the time. Uh, we can see from around verse 6 where he says, O oh Lord, God of our fathers, I do not the God who is in heaven. You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it to them and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your 
best friend. You see, he goes back to God and worships God, and they praise God and they pray. And this is a way of honoring God, by worshiping God, by praising, by reminding him of those things that he did to us. Through this, you also get to, um, you also get, to get breakthrough from God when we render our praises to him. Even in, in our normal circumstances, even in our houses, um, when probably you are going through something or your children are going through something, you find that that, that child, there's a way when your children comes to you, there's a way you tend to listen to that person more than that, that the person who doesn't like, um, uh, who just comes straight. So it's good to always praise God and remember the good things that he's always he's done for us. So I admire King Jehoshaphat so much by what he did, uh, by commanding, by, uh, by proclaiming praises to the God of, of Abraham, uh, the God of Israel, during the time that we were going through this. And I was even asking myself, when you hear uh, people coming to attack you, in normal circumstances, people pray. No, don't, people don't even pray. People cry. You know, what you call a woga, wana lia, says it on the God, but akunanga praises. In the case, in the case, they decided to praise God and worship Him. You know, and this is something that is commendable. It's something to thank God for. That in our stresses, let us remember to thank God, to praise Him, because in praises, the blessings of God also come down. The other thing that I get from King Jehoshaphat, a lesson that I also got from him, is they re he revered God. Eh? When you read verses 18 of Second Chronicles, there's a place where it says that Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and all the people in Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Can you imagine that? Everybody of us falling down before our Father, you know? before our Father to just worship him, to remind him of his goodness, to love on him during our times of struggle. Instead of just crying or only taking our petitions and troubles to God, just coming before the God with, uh, with humility and bowing down before his presence. You know, it's not something that you should be embarrassed about. Sometimes I see even in church, you know, when you go through worship, even lifting our hands to God is a problem. I don't know whether in a Konga pride or manini, but for me, I feel there is greatness in worship. You know, just surrendering to God and telling God how good he is, how marvelous he is, how awesome he is. Even lying down is something that gives honor to God. It's something that glorifies God. And this is what King Jehoshaphat did. And all the people of, of Judah and Jerusalem also did the same. And kwa wanaume, tiombaya, you know, hata kutuwa tu machozi kwa buwana, you know. It's something that... It's not a weakness, but they, I really admire men who, who, who break up for God. I really admire men who break down for God. It is something that is it's so admirable. So when you go before the presence of God, remember those things that God did for you. And when you remember those things that God did for you, you wouldn't be ashamed of God. Worship your God, you know. This was a king, you know? This was a king. He bowed down before God. What about us? You know? What about us? This was a king, a old king, bowing down before God. So let us bow down before God and worship him in all circumstances. I remember when, Dav uh, when, David, um, when David was praising God, David, Ali, 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 that one, I've never known which kind of dance that was. But we remember how his wife looked at him, at him and the way Alim Darau, and as a process, Alipata curse. Please, kujeshilie belangu kama Daudi, kujeshilie mbele amungu kama King Jehoshaphat. Let us worship our God, for he is a good God. Yeah. And the other thing that I also learned from the story of King Jehoshaphat is we honor God by putting our faith in him. And this I pick from verses 20 where the Bible says, early in the morning they left from the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, King Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah, people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. 
when you're going through turbulence in your life, put your faith in God. All these other things may fail, but God can never fail us. Sometimes you feel like God is late, but God is never late. God is always on time. So let us not be wary when we go through challenges because God will always come through for us if we put our faith in God. And when we put our faith in him, we honor him in the, in the process. The other lesson that I learned is uh, from King Jehoshaphat, and this story is in, um, I picked from verses 21. Um, let me read it. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out of the, at the head of the army saying, give thanks to God for his love and do us forever. Imagine these people were preparing for war. Yeah? And then they decided to sing and praise God. You can imagine. You no, know, I was reading this, I, I, but the songs that were coming to my mind was like, eh? Amen. You can imagine during this time, well, you can imagine they were running to God to help them in this time of battle. And when they ran to God, we will see later that God indeed helped them and they were able to succeed. The other song that also came to my mind when I was thinking about, and you'll also help me sing, as they were singing, I, the other song that was coming to my mind is that, Hakuna mgu kama wewe buwana Hakuna mgu kama wewe buwana Kwa milele, lele, e, e, e Akuna mgu kama wewe bwana Akuna mgu kama wewe yawe Kwa But zinginez <laughs> mepotea. Uh, so they praised God. And you can imagine how our Father in heaven would see them. I can imagine how God was smiling down at them. You know, cheki watoto wangu. You see? It's something that is so beautiful that when we're faced with challenges, we can praise that God. It's encouraging, it's an encouraging to uh, encouragement to me and also to you that when we faced with circumstances, let us praise this God. Because through praising him and worship, he'll always come through for us. The other lesson that I, I, I picked, now from, not from uh, Second Chronicles, but this one I picked from uh, the New Testament reading. That was in Acts 16. And this one I'll, uh, I'll get from um, verses 25. That is Acts 16, verses 25. It says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. What was prison, my friend? Mumefungwa yeah. prison. But you think of this God, and you know the power of God. So you decide to sing for God in, pri in prison. Song I could sana for this one, but I was thinking, they were like, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. All our privilege to carry. All our sins to God in prayer. They left out your trials and temptations. You see, they were going through trials and temptations, but they remembered the friend that they had in Jesus. You know, they remember the friend that they had in Jesus. And when they praise this God, this friend that they had, God saw them through. So whatever circumstance, whatever you go through, remember that let us continue to honor God. It doesn't matter what you go through in life. Let us remember to always give thanks to him. Let us always remember to praise him and worship him in all circumstances. And now when you praise God and honor him, 
through worship and, and through praises, what happens? So these are the ki one of the some of the things that I found that happens to us when we honor God through praise and worship. One of the things that I learned, uh, I go back to Second Chronicles, is that the Spirit of God, of the Lord, comes upon you. That one I go to Second Chronicles 20:14, which says, "Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of." Jahel and the son of Matania, a Livat and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the in the assembly. You know, as you worship God, there's a way God speaks to you. There's a way the Holy Spirit comes down and ministers to you. So it's always good to worship God. It's always used to uh, good to praise Him because when you do that, you invite the Spirit of God down to come and work through you and even minister to you. Um, the other one that I the other lesson that I can say it's what happens or benefits of worshiping God is that God directs your ways and shows you the way to go. This I got from verses 16 of Second Chronicles. Um, I'll read. Um, Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You see, they, they didn't even know what to do. This is, this is an information that came abruptly. I don't know why during those days, the people, like, it's like war or battle was a thing of, you know, it was, I don't know. They used, I don't know, but you just want to go to battle with them. You know, I don't understand, but battles were so common during those days. So they were not even prepared for this battle. You wake up, unaskia, somebody's coming to attack you, honestly. You know? You don't have plans. So when they sought God and God directs them, akawapatiambaka strategy, you see? You do this, do this. Watakuwa hapa, watakuwa hapa, you know? So let us seek God in everything. And as a result, he's going to give us ways of how to handle our battles. Uh, the other lesson that I picked is that God wins your battles for you when you praise and worship him. Uh, we see how uh, Jehoshaphat commanded the people of Judah and Jerusalem to praise God. And they worshipped him and the enemies fought amongst themselves. Imagine they didn't even raise a finger. Ah, what was in the war? Wale wale kwame jipanga kuatak Judah, wale in the war. Waka piga na hawe nyewe, waka uwa na hawe nyewe. These people didn't have to do anything. Can you imagine how good he, God, how good God is? You know, while his mama too, you know, God grow, great, uh, brought confusion and these armies fought themselves. Waka wana wenye, I wonder, mutu wa last. We are luli wana nani? Because wali kona sema, they killed themselves. So lo ula last, last, last. Yeah, luli wa aje. I don't know. You know, because the Bible says that the, when they, when the, uh, the people of Judah came, they found no one that all died. You know, so I've never understood. I've never understood that bit. I look for Kiviaki. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so when you worship God, battles are fought for us, battles are won for us. So be still. And watch God fight for you. That one I picked from verses 22 to 24. The other one that I picked is that we get supernatural blessings when you worship him. And that one I picked from verses 25. That says, um, So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off the pl their plunder. And they found among them a great amount of equipment, clothing, and also articles of value more than they would take away. There was so much plunder that it took them three days to collect them. Imagine now all come in the war and then they had valuables. Who goes to war with valuables, honestly? You know? Uh, you know who goes to war? They had clothes, things of value, you know? And all these, the people of Judah were able to take them from these people. So when we praise God and worship him, we get supernatural blessings in that even when people, you know, those things that Azikai Kawaida, Atiwoto Menda War, 
walikuwa na vitu probably walikuwa mpaka na gold na walikuwa menda war honestly who goes to war with gold you know and the people of judah are able to get all this from and it took them three days you can imagine the amount of wealth they come out they came out with from a war mumenda war munarudi na no munarudi na munarudi kama nyini bazu ama mnasema gaje muko mabazu that one na mlikuwa mnafaa kuatakiwa you can imagine the goodness of god God is so good God is so faithful let us trust this God let us worship him let us let us worship him let us praise him in all the things that you do the other lesson that i got from this is uh, that people will acknowledge your god this one i also i got it from verses 29 of second chronicles uh, which says the fear of god came upon all the kingdom of the countries when they heard how the lord had fought had fought amongst the enemies of israel you know people be, be, people acknowledge the god of judah people acknowledge the god of jerusalem people acknowledge the god of jehoshaphat it is my prayer that when you praise god when you worship him people will acknowledge the god of jane kageha people will acknowledge the god of esther you know people will acknowledge the god of cynthia people will acknowledge the god of joyce let us rejoice in this god let us praise him that people can say indeed the god of joyce the god of uh, revkev is the god the true god let us keep praising god and worshiping him so that our god can be acknowledged throughout everywhere that you go and also this also found it in acts also where the jailer uh, when he, he found out that this people the, when he found that the jail door had been broken he, he, fee, he, he gets into panic but then again Paul and Silas tells him that we are here that one also got from uh, verses 20, 29 also like this other one and it says um, the jailer called for lights rushed in and fell trembling before Silas uh 30 he then brought them out and asked says what must i do to be saved so let me just leave it at that but there's a place when you read down you'll acknowledge that because of the praise and worship and what god did to these people paul and silas were in prison the jailer longed for this god of silas and paul you see so let us worship him god through so that through our worship people may acknowledge our god The other lesson that I picked is salvation will come to those who do not who are not saved. And we see even in the story of uh, on this part that um Silas and uh, Paul and Silas were in prison and as they were praising God this jailer desires salvation comes to this jailer he gets born again and as a result even his entire household gets salvation. The other lesson that I also found from this is that uh, we found fa- we find favor with God and also with man and this one i read it i got it from uh, acts 16 verses 35 where it says when it was daylight the magistrate sent their office officers to the jailer with the with the order release those men through the worship that they did during the midnight hours the magistrate even without even knowing that they were praising him they are orders this man to be released So that is how God comes through for you. That is how God give you favor with men of authority. And he, he fights your battles and there is that these people were were freed from uh from jail. The other thing that I learned that is that I, I didn't pick the right word but I decided to say that uh, God will show you off. <laughs> and this I got from verses 37 to 40. In that when these people had been freed from jail, that is Paul and Silas Imagine they refuse to leave. Umekwa jela the whole night alafu mnambo you are free to go and then you refuse to go and they say we won't go till they come for us. Can you imagine? God shows them off. You know, when you praise God when you worship him, he's going to show you off. So indeed when they when these people realized that uh kumbe there's, there's a mistake walikuwa wamefanya hapo, they didn't know that these people are citizens of Rome and that. So the next day they came to appease them that is in verses 39 they came to appease them and escorted them from the prison can you imagine wamekuja kwa escort out of the prison 
what a kind, what a good God we serve. You know, He'll even show you off to the people who persecute you. So let us put our trust in this God. Let us keep uh, praising this God and let us keep worshiping this God because indeed He is a true God. We'll, he'll never disappoint us let, yeah, as long as we seek Him in all our ways. And um, being queer day, I thought that this was a, a very uh, was a was a, a right. Uh, way of honoring our God even during in, on this day. And for me, the other thing that I, uh, that I also felt that gives Christ or that gives our God honor is giving our lives to Jesus. That is the first honor that we can give to God, that we surrender our lives to him, that we give our lives to him because our word, the word of God says in John 16, 3.16 that for God so loved the world that he came, that we may not perish but have life everlasting. So if you've never received God, I don't know what you're waiting for. I don't know what uh, is, is keeping you or holding you from giving your life to God. Our theme from this, for this year uh, for Anglican was consider your ways. So I'm asking us, all of us to consider our ways and honor God by giving our lives to him, by worshiping him, by praising him, because indeed he is a good God. And when we do this, his name will be glorified in our lives, in our families, and in all things that we do. And as you honor God, in all your ways, as you worship God, my prayer for you this morning will be, and this I picked from Psalm 20, will be, the, will be this. As you honor God through worship and praise, may the Lord answer you when you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Then we'll shout for joy when you are victorious and we'll lift up our banners in the name of our God of our God, may the help grant, and we will lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all our requests. Amen. So, as we think about this, I would answer there's this song that really ministers to my heart in a special way. I'll ask uh, uh, who knows this song um, by Frank. To Kufu. I want to sing this song uh, and I would request back up as I sing it and as I sing it I want us to reflect on our lives and uh, just surrender to God and ask him to minister you, to you to help you in all your, your ways Esther uh, and uh, I would ask you to help me yes that one I'd like us to sing this song. And if you are there as you sing this God and you've never surrendered your life to Christ, it's a chance for you to just honor God by surrendering your life to Christ. So think about it. We'll just stand. I would request that we stand up. And as you sing and as you're worshiping, just surrender to God. Just praise God. Worship Him and praises because you've seen things that God can do to us through worship. Sita budu mungu mwingine iliona mifano yoyote Sita pika magoti yangu ni sujudu Nita kusanya sadaka zangu ziwe manu 